Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting viewer-suggested calculus question using Gaussian integral, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate the summation from n is one to infinity. We have square root of n pi over integral from zero to infinity n root of x to the power of ln of one over x dx. Especially when you evaluate this integral on the denominator, you will see Gaussian integral. So let me just call i as this integral from 0 to infinity of nth root of x to the power of ln of 1 over x dx. And let me just rewrite this integral part. nth root of x is x to the power of 1 over n, and ln of 1 over x is negative ln of x. So let me just rewrite this as integral from 0 to infinity x to the power of negative 1 over n times ln of x, and then dx. Okay, but then again, this integral is undefined on both the lower bound and the upper bound. So we should be using the limit, right? But before that, let's represent x as e to the power of ln x, and also rewrite this as integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power of ln x, that to the power of negative 1 over n times ln of x, and then we have dx. Using exponential operation, this is just the same as integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power of ln of x times negative 1 over n times ln of x, and then we have dx. So that is why this is just the same as integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power of negative 1 over n times ln of x squared. And then we have dx, so that we can use u substitution. So let's call u as ln of x. Okay, then your du is the same as 1 over x dx. Okay, that says dx is the same as x du. And then also this is the same as e to the power of um, u, du. This is the same as just the dx. Okay, especially for the lower bound and the upper bound. So we can check. So for the lower bound, meaning the limit when x is going to zero. And then your ln of x, okay, this is going to negative infinity. For the upper bound, when the limit x is going to infinity, ln of x is now going to infinity. So that is why using this, we can just rewrite this integral i as Integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the power of negative 1 over n, okay, that times u squared times e to the power of u, and then we have du. Also, we can combine these two terms on the integral, right? So this integral has to be the same as integral from negative infinity to infinity, okay, that of e to the power of negative 1 over n, u squared plus u. And then we have du. Okay, so let's pull this negative 1 over n out from these two terms on the exponent, and then complete the square. So this is just the same as integral, still from negative infinity to infinity. And then let me just rewrite this integral part. It is e to the power of, let me pull this negative 1 over n out from the whole exponents, then we should have negative one over n. That parenthesis, okay, then u squared minus nu, then we have du. And then this has to be just the same as integral from negative infinity to infinity, um, e to the power of negative one over n. Okay, then that parenthesis, u squared minus nu and then plus uh, n squared over four. Close your parenthesis, and then that times e to the power of negative one over n. That parenthesis, negative n squared over four. Close your parenthesis. Then we have du. So that we can complete the square. Then if you pull this e to the power of n over 4 out, it's the same as e to the power of n over 4 times integral from negative infinity to infinity. 
And then we have e to the power of negative parenthesis 2u minus n over 2 times square root of n, entire thing square. And then we have du. So that we can use v substitution for this entire fraction, 2u minus n over 2 times square root of n. Let me call that as the v. So calling v as 2u minus n over 2 times square root of n. That says dv has to be just the same as 2 over 2 times square root of n of du. So which says if you cancel 2's out, we should have now the square root of n times dv. Okay, this is just a du. So using this, let me just rewrite this integral, right? Then your integral i has to be just the same as same e to the power of n over 4. Okay, then that times, now we have integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the power of negative v squared. That of square root of n, and then we have dv. Pulling the square root of n outside of the integral, then we should have square root of n times e to the power of n over 4. That times integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the power of negative v squared and dv. Gaussian integral, which has the value of square root of pi, right? So since this is square root of pi, we can just rewrite everything, right? So i has to be just the same as square root of n times square root of pi. This is square root of n pi. The times everything else, e to the power of n over 4. So we can just go back to the summation, right? So the summation that we are looking for, summation from n is 1 to infinity, Numerator was square root of n pi. And then your denominator turns out to be the square root of n pi times e to the power of n over 4. So, looks like the square root of n pi got canceled out. So, it's just the same as summation uh, from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over e to the power of n over 4. And then we can just rewrite this as summation from n is 1 to infinity of negative 4 to the root of e to the power of n. I want to use infinite geometric series formula, but before that, let's just make sure that your common ratio, which is 1 over e to the power of 1 over 4, this is less than 1, which is the case. Okay, so for the summation, I'll be writing this down again. So the summation from n is 1 to infinity of negative 4 to the root of e to the power of n. Since your summation is starting from 1, not from 0, so this is the same as the negative 1 plus 1 over 1 minus negative 4 to the root of e. So if you combine these two, it is just the same as negative uh, parenthesis 1 minus negative 4 to the root of e then that plus 1 over your denominator, 1 minus negative 4 to the root of e. So if you cancel negative 1 and 1 out, we should have then this is the same as negative, negative 4 to the root of e. Okay, then that divided by 1 minus negative 4 to the root of e. And if you multiply 4 to the root of e to your numerator and denominator, then we should have 1 over 4 to the root of e, and then that minus 1. So the answer for this question is 1 over 4 to the root of e minus 1. Okay, so pretty interesting calculus question using Gaussian integral for this integral on the denominator. How amazing.